The hoop continues to be a huge trend, but designers are having a lot of fun with it. So they're adding pearls or they're doing different shapes, but still it is all about the hoop. You are listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 177. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews, Chief Visionary Officer over at Flourish and Thrive Academy. And I'm super stoked because I have another fun episode for you. I feel like this year for me has been the year for meeting really awesome people. And a few months ago, I met a woman named Delia Folk. Actually, I was introduced to her through a mutual friend who I just met. She was on our influencer panel uh, at Flourish and Thrive Live, Aggie Burnett. She's like, you got to meet this girl, Delia. I met her at an event that Emily Merrill put on and I was super excited about it. And she's like, I just think the two of you would hit it off. You guys have a lot in common. And she's also been the jewelry buyer for Barney's for a very long time. And so she introduced us. We tried to meet for coffee. We weren't able to. Her mom was in town. Long story short, they're launching this new brand and we didn't meet. And then we were both either speaking or presenting at the Jewelry Independent Summit here in New York City. And I realized at the same day that this awesome girl that I was trying to meet up with was going to be one of the people that I was interviewing, which was super duper fun. So Anyway, we've become fast friends. She is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to styling and trend forecasting and what is happening in the jewelry space. I think because not only was she a buyer for so long for Barney's New York, but she's also been in fashion and she's like really committed to fashion and helping people style, you know, create their own personal style based on what it is that they love and using fashion as information to dress yourself and style yourself based on your body type and your age bracket and all that stuff. So Delia has since left Barney's to start her own media company called The Style That Binds Us. And they just spent the month, her and her mother, who is the co-founder of the company, traveling all through Europe to seek out these trends. They also spent time at New York Fashion Week, so I don't want to discount that, to seek out the trends for spring in 2019 and to share with you today on the podcast about how you can use them in your collection and you know, infuse some of these trend ideas in what you're actually designing. So I'm really, really excited about today's episode because you're going to get so much value and you're going to be way ahead of the game as you're launching your collections this January and February for spring collections. So stay tuned. We're going to dive into that in a moment. Before I do, I wanted to share with you a goal that I had. So I am really committed to helping designers get results in their business. And last year at Flourish and Thrive Live 2017, I coined myself as the tough love leader at Flourish and Thrive because people gave me feedback that sometimes I wasn't so nicey-nicey and I wasn't coddling their, you know, coddling their drama or whatever you want to call it with their business, but that I was like, I I tell it straight. And I'm like, here's what you need to do to grow your business. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to help you get results. And at the end of the day, this has turned into something so much bigger than that one statement or one comment. It's become one of my mantras. I'm not here to coddle you. In a way, I'm not here to be your friend, even though I am a lot of your friends. I don't, I don't want you to take it the wrong way, but I'm really here to get you results. And that's at the end of the day, I'm such a results focused person. I know not, life is not all about growing your business and stuff like that. You know, I've built a really amazing business around a lifestyle that I wanted to create. And I want to, you know, my mission has really been to help other designers, uh, creative types visionary types do the same thing. Because I think sometimes as creatives, we have a lot of ideas and we don't know how to use that creativity that we have to move things forward. So it all started with this mantra that I wanted to have because I was so tired of jewelry brands saying that they weren't paying themselves or they weren't making the kind of money that they wanted to make or that they finally had reached a financial goal, like cross the six figure mark, but their life was crazy and uh, they, they needed help. And they just felt like, they were, they couldn't see a way out of the situation that they created or the business that they built. And so my mission has been over this last year to get a hundred designers over the six figure mark, a hundred thousand dollars in revenue or more. And those who are over that hundred thousand dollars in revenue or more to help them build businesses around the lifestyle that they want and desire so that they're not necessarily going to 40 shows every single weekend. And that's how they make money so that they're not you know, struggling when wholesale 
business shifts and change so that they're really setting themselves up for success and that they're protecting what they've built in their business for the long term. And so it's sort of like this two phase or three phase, maybe philosophy. You know, we work on this thing like a three year vision so that we can help you kind of see the big picture and then help you move forward towards your one year goals. And so with that being said, I'm on this mission to help designers launch, grow and scale their businesses and reach the goals that they truly desire to achieve and reach in business. And so I wanted to invite you to see if there's a way that we could potentially get you some clarity on your business and help you create one of these game plans that we've been working with, with so many designers. So if you are someone who is ready for a done with you solution, like you would like help, you would like to grow your business a lot faster than trying to figure it out on your own, uh, or just taking a course or being part of our membership in the Diamond Insiders and you're willing to take action and stay accountable to move things forward in your business, and you're saying like, yes, I'm giving this a heck yes. This call is really ideal for people who have an online presence and have a website already built because it's truly my belief that in this day and age of digital marketing and online strategy, that without a properly functioning website, regardless of your business model, that that is your number one sales tool. It doesn't matter if you're only selling wholesale and you meet your wholesale buyers in person or you're only selling direct to consumer at in-person shows or you're only selling custom jewelry like I do, or you want to actually build a thriving e-commerce business. You still need a website. Hands down, a really good website that talks to your customers, that speaks their language, that shows them exactly that your brand is for them. These are the most important variables And as I mentioned before, your business model doesn't matter as much, but a desire to grow and connect with your perfect customers online using our know, like, and trust buyer journey framework is the key to success on one of these calls. So on that call, I'm going to help you get crystal clear on where you're going and help you fill the gaps of where you are now to where you want to be so that you can move a lot faster. So if you think that this is something that's really interesting to you and you'd like to join us and you'd like us to help you move a little bit faster then I'd love to invite you to head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash game plan and sign up and apply for a free game plan call. And yeah, it would be awesome. The call is totally free. We're just going to chit chat with you. And at the end of the call, we're going to tell you if we think we can help you or not. And if we can't help you, we'll kindly send you on your way. And if we can help you, we'll tell you exactly how we think we can help you move a little bit faster so that you're reaching your goals right away. Sound good? Okay, awesome. Head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash game plan and apply for your free call today. Be awesome. And let's dive into today's episode. But before we do, I'd love to take a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is findingbox.com. I love brands that support small business because we're all small businesses here. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to order thousands and thousands of hang tags or logo design elements to add to your jewelry because it's expensive and you don't want to have to carry all that inventory, right? So Finding Box is a great solution for this because they have custom engraved logo hang tags, beads, and custom jewelry pouches. They love working with small business. In fact, they've worked with over 2,000 already. They have fast lead times. Some products can even be finished in 24 hours. Hello, thank you. They also only require you to place small order minimums. And you can get free design revisions and they also provide a sample. So they're just really a great resource. We highly recommend that you go check them out and place your first order right now by using the code FNT podcast. That's F ampersand T podcast in all caps and enjoy 10% off by January 31st, 2019. This is a great opportunity for you to save some money and also test out a new vendor where you can get small quantities and not have to be stuck with a ton of different things. All righty. Thank you so much to our sponsor today. I am excited to dive into this trend forecasting with Delia Folk because get your pens and pencils out quickly. Make sure that you listen to this on autopilot. Make sure that you share this with your jewelry designer friends because they're we're going through a ton of trends. There is like some amazing value add and information that Delia is sharing with us today that regardless of the type of jewelry, you can take little bits from to help create some of those trends in your business as well. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews. I'm really excited to be here today. I have Delia Folk on the show today. Delia, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you all might remember Delia because I interviewed her for episode 168 of the Thrive by Design podcast, not a very long time ago, but I asked Delia to come back on the show with me really soon after, which I usually don't do, primarily because 
She spent the whole month of September traveling around for fashion month, seeking out the hottest trends and doing her due diligence to start sharing what is going on for spring 2019. So Delia, I'm excited. We have a lot to talk about. (laughs) I cannot wait. Okay, cool. So you just started a new business. You recently left Barney's like since we've aired the episode and you started a new business with your mom. So let's talk a little bit about the style that binds us. Sure. So I have the buying background and she is a stylist. So we have come together with our two experiences to launch a media platform. So we have the YouTube channel, podcast, and blog, and we have industry interviews, which I definitely need to have you on the channel. (laughs) (laughs) And we also have style hacks. So can you wear a crop jean at 50 or how to wear a moto jacket six different ways, things like that. And we really capture a wider age and size range since it is the mother-daughter relationship. I love it. So I'm really excited because I've I've watched a few of your YouTube videos and I also love your podcast. I remember I was in Europe earlier this summer when I was first introduced to you, I started listening to your podcast before we'd even officially met. And I was so excited because like one of the first episodes was you had was a jewelry designer on it. I know. Yeah. So it's a place to come to discover new brands, restaurants, museum exhibits. We are scouring basically the earth at this point so that you can be the first to know. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause it's going to be, it's so cool. Like so many great things. And I'm sure that many designers from our community are going to start pitching your podcast to get on there, which will be super fun. I should make some intros to you at another time. Uh, really yeah. excited about that. But the focus here is really about spring 2019 trends. So first and foremost, how was your trip? What did you see? Where'd you go? All that stuff. Okay. So the trip was beyond my wildest dreams. I always wanted to attend Fashion Month and just kind of decided we're going to do it. And thankfully, mom happily obliged, even though I was dragging her around Europe. So tell our listeners your mother's name, not just Delia Folk's mom. (laughs) My name is Allison Brune. That is my (laughs) parents are divorced. That's why we have different last names, both remarried. (laughs) So that's confusing, which is why maybe a lot of people don't really know that she's my mom. But anyway, so we started in New York for New York Fashion Week, and then we left for London Fashion Week, then Milan Fashion Week, and then Paris Fashion Week. Okay, awesome. Okay, we're going to dive right in. New York City, what'd you see? What's awesome? What are some of the jewelry trends? What are some of the fashion trends? Let's dive in. Okay, so it's interesting because basically... There are so many trends. And what was also interesting to us is that it wasn't each city was a pocket. It really flowed throughout. Oh, wow. That was really fun to to notice because, and also on the streets too. So it's interesting talking about trends for now and then trends for later for spring 19. So starting with large statement pieces, both earrings and necklaces. So this was at Anna Sui, Balenciaga, Jackmas, and Givenchy. And then the one earring trend continues to remain. So that was at Philip Lim, Zimmerman, Jonathan Simkai, and Oscar de la Renta. So just earring or like mismatched earrings? I'm wearing mismatched. Both. both, Okay. So that was just the one statement earring, nothing else on this side. I mean, you could do like a nut or a pearl or something, but on the runway, that's how they were showing it, at least those particular designers. And then shells and beachy jewelry, which was definitely a trend for spring 18, continues into spring 19. So that was shown at Anna Sui, Missoni, and Alchizara. And then beads. There were a lot of beads. Ooh, perfect. Yeah, in all classifications. And then the mismatch earrings, like you're wearing today, that was at Adam. And then, okay, hoops. The hoop continues to be a huge trend, but designers are having a lot of fun with it. So they're adding pearls or they're doing different shapes, but still it is all about the hoop. It remains. All about Um, the hoop. I feel like you said that. You said that the last time I interviewed you too and the couple times that I've seen you. It is all about the hoop. So hoop it up, guys. Different shapes, shapes and sizes. <laughs> exactly. All over Instagram, all over the streets, all over the runways. So 
really have fun with it. Be creative. Think outside the box when designing your hoops. There were crescent hoops, hoops that are not facing front ways, but they're facing to the side. Okay. Um, like, like, yeah, open hoop, like forward facing. Okay. So that was at Carolina Herrera, Prabal Garang, and Rodarte. And then there were some leaf shapes. So that was at Coenza Schooler. And then also some earrings in the shape of a hand, which is interesting. Ooh. Body parts, yes. <laughs> and Body then, parts are a trend in jewelry right now. I like it. <laughs> and all classifications were shown. So it wasn't all about the necklace, for example. It really yeah. was earrings, necklaces, less rings, definitely bracelets, but rings were, of course, shown too. Okay, so the choker. Remember how that leather choker was yes. everywhere? And then all of a sudden it died. And if you're wearing a choker, it was just, how can you be wearing a choker at this time? (laughs) So the choker is back, but it's dressy. It's dressed up gold with gemstones or pearls. So that was actually prevalent in a lot of different shows. For example, Brandon Maxwell, Adam, Mark Jacobs, Aria, Fendi, Mew Mew Dior. I mean, the list goes on. So are we talking chokers that like literally like around the neck? Uh, As opposed to like the ones that hit sort of at the nape of the neck? It's actually both. It was anything short. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Okay. Coins, charms, and medallions. So that was prevalent both in bracelets and necklaces. So that would be Oscar de la Renta and Carolina Herrera. So that's one, two examples of that. And then bold bracelets. So we are not being quiet here. You're going to wear a bracelet. But we are being loud and proud. And that would be Tom Ford and Rodarte are two examples that sh- of designers that showed those. Okay, link chains, both okay. necklaces and earrings. That was really prevalent. Lots of different shows. Oscar de la Renta and Monse. Those are actually designed by the same two people. So that's probably why it was in both of those shows. Oh, interesting. Before. I didn't know that. Yes, it's... um. Fernando Garcia and Laura Kim. Okay, awesome. Started Monse, and then they also are the creative directors for Oscar. So that they're so busy. Yeah. I don't know how. I know, right? Tori Birch, Gabriella Hurst, John Batista Valley, Paco Rabanne, Off White, and Marnie. So that was the link chain was everywhere, which is so- nice because. What? I interrupted you right in the mid- middle of your link chain trend, but you saw it all over. Do you want to relist the designers who are showing oh, sure. link chains? Sure, definitely. Okay, awesome. Oscar de la Renta, Monse, Tori Birch, Off White, Gabriella Hurst, John Batista Valley, Paco Ravon, and Marnie. <laughs> so many of them, which so is many. nice. <laughs> so these are like big link chains, like chunky links, like kind mm-hmm. of flash to the 80s, slash 90s. Yeah. Yes, and also some that are less out there, but I feel like it's nice because so many jewelry boxes have link chains, so it is time to break that out. Yeah, bring them out again. I love it. Okay, cool. Okay, so ear cuffs have definitely been a trend, but now this season they were huge ear cuffs. (laughs) Probably not super wearable, the ones that were on the runway, but at Balmain, Maison Margiela, and Mew Mew, they were very... (laughs) Crazy. Like, like almost like elf ears or something. <laughs> yeah, just like very large things happening. <laughs> but Amazing. Have an ear cuff and be creative with it as well as the hoop. So, with your point of view, with your aesthetic, make an ear cuff that's right for you. Okay, layering necklaces. So. Ralph Lauren, Alexander McQueen, and Paco Rabanne. Those three were showing lots of different layering necklaces, which I feel like has been around for a little bit of time now. Okay, so a trend that's in ready-to-wear and handbags and also shoes is also in jewelry. So the logo, the name, having that on your jewelry, the nameplate necklaces. So that was at Telfar, Chanel, Balenciaga, and Burberry. They were showing named and logo necklaces and then the arm cuff that's oh it's back like cleopatra is back yes, all right yes. so chloe east saint laurent and john batista valley those were the three of them showed the arm cuff 
and then feathers. So the Western trend has been prevalent in the boots and some of the ready-to-wear. So also we're showing feathered earrings at Louis Vuitton, Loewe, and La Chambre. Love so those that. Are the trends. <laughs> those are the trends. Wow. We went, so, what were your favorite ones? What do you think are the most wearable trends that you saw? And what are you going to be wearing? Because I know you and your mom are always like, we just, I just met you, met up with you guys at a styling event at Intermix. You, uh, you, you came back from your trip. I think where'd you fly in from? Milan, Paris, from Paris, and uh, you came. You went straight to off the plane, practically to a styling event at Intermix, which was super fun. For those of you who don't live in New York City, Intermix is a chain in the United States that started in New York, but there are many stores here in New York City. I get a lot of my clothes there. And uh, it was a really fun. This is a little sidebar because I walked in and your mom was wearing the jacket to the suit that I wore at my live event. <laughs> and uh, it was a Veronica Beard suit. And uh, one of our sponsors called me a business mermaid. So your mom can also be business mermaid number two. <laughs> hear that. That is amazing. I wish I could have been at the live event. I was so sad to miss. I know. Well, the next time we host one, which will probably be in the spring of 2020, you will definitely be there and we will not have it coincide with fashion anything. It will just be time for us to talk about business because no one will be traveling for fashion month. (laughs) And we'll have other events where we're going to have you, but what were some of your favorite things that you saw that you think that you will wear and style your customers with? Okay. I definitely, obviously the hoop because yeah. it comes in so many iterations. So like, for example, I'm wearing, can you see these? Yeah, those earrings. are great. Love them. They are called the ravioli earring and it's a brand based in Barcelona. What's the name of the brand? Oh, Gaviria. G-A-V-I-R-I-A. Okay. They're beautiful. Thank you. So it's just fun to see people interpreting the hoop trend in their own way. You can go super classic or you can go huge hoops. I mean, you can do a smaller hoop for day, big hoop for night. So I think that one's super fun because it's just all over the board, lots of different ways that everyone, I think that that's a trend that everyone can be involved in and it's not all the same. So you can really individualize it be personable, et cetera, show off your style. Yeah. And then I love the layering. I think that's fun because each piece probably tells a different story of where you got the necklace, the brand, how you discovered it, et cetera. So I think that's a really personal stack. So I think it's the same with ready to wear that on the runway, it's usually very big in statement. And that's not necessarily, usually they'll tame it down for what's actually people are going to buy. So like the statement ear cuff, I would wear an ear cuff, but in a smaller way, for example. (laughs) So I I love link chains. I think that's super fun. I'm glad that that's back. And the choker. I mean, I always love Cleopatra and I mean, Princess Diana, every, all of these fat women have worn the choker. So it keeps coming back in different ways. So I'm excited that this one is super elevated and it will be perfect. That's so fun. So I had, I designed a uh, choker necklace for a friend of mine for her wedding back in the nineties. You know, I'm a lot older than you, but this is when I first started my jewelry business. And she gave me like a box of like a bunch of pearls that I think it was, we, I redesigned the family. I can't remember. It was so long ago or if I just bought the pearls. Anyway, she posted a picture and I'm like, that's back. Cause it's like, just like a, you know, five strand choker of pearls. It's so elegant. Yeah. Like exactly oh, like what Chris, princess Diana wore. And she says she still wears it. I'm like, that's impressive. I'm glad she should. Yeah. I'm going to comment on her post from today saying chokers are back. Make sure that you wear that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah, it's perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to add that you saw or that was fun? Like what was like something really fun that you did on your trip that was not fashion related? Well, getting to go to the museums, it was so crazy because it was seriously a work trip. So I packed every single hour, which my poor mother was probably not thrilled about, but there were just so many brands to meet and shows to go to and presentations. And if we had even a second and for example, in Milan, we got these little books and it said hour by hour, all the different presentations. So it's like, oh, we should stop by this and check out this brand. So 
there was never any stopping, but we did make time for museums. So we went to the Miro exhibit in Paris. We went to the YSL museum in Paris. And I didn't realize that that was his actual office. So that was so cool. There's this exhibit that you go through and it's all of his inspiration from Japan and China. And then you walk upstairs and there's this white door and it says studio. And you're like, is this, is this his actual studio where he worked that you've seen in movies? And I mean, I was just almost brought to tears. It, it was where he actually worked in that white space with the mirrored walls. And just thinking about all those people that have been in that room. It was just so my- cool. I love it. That's so fun. Yay. Yeah. I love going to the fashion museums when you're traveling abroad. It's just like so much fun. I haven't been to Paris in so long. You're making me want to go back to Paris. I know you have to go. (laughs) Maybe I'll like tag along with you and your mom next year at the Paris room of your fashion. (laughs) March. Definitely. March. Yay. Um, Awesome. So where can everyone find you? Where can they follow you on YouTube, on Instagram? What's your website? Tell us all about that. And I'll make sure this is linked in the show notes. Thank you. So the website is the style that binds us.com the style with my Southern accent. Some people don't know what I'm saying. Okay. So the YouTube channel and podcast are also called the style that binds us. And then Instagram myself, the personal account is at Delia folk D E L I A F O L K. And then at the style that binds us Instagram. Love it. Okay. Awesome. Everyone go follow them because they're going to be always on top and featuring trends that are happening so that you can use this to design for your collection and make sure that your designs are top of mind and hot with what's going on in the season. So you sell more because that's what it's all about over here, right? (laughs) Thanks for being here today, Delia. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. I want to thank our sponsor, Finding Box. You can find out more about them by heading on over to our show notes floristriveacademy.com forward slash episode 177. And you can learn more about them. And if you're interested in jumping on a free game plan call, we'll also have the link over there where you can apply for one of those calls and we can help you move a little bit faster. You in? Give me a heck yes if you are. All right. Thanks so much for listening today. I am super excited to be bringing you this podcast every single week. Thrive by Design is really like my labor of love. I love doing this audio version of like the things that I teach. It's so fun for me. So thank you for listening. It's really a pleasure. If you know someone else who would really benefit from this, I'd love for you to share the show with them. Thanks a lot. Take care until next time. This is Tracy Matthews signing off.